are refreshing. It's playing now on the board. The time of your great blessing. Thank you, Darian Dennis. Come on. Nothing but victory. That's the promise of our King. To do exceedingly. Abundantly. Above what you ask or think. Put it in the house. Let's take the
Let's go to the throne of grace and be able to stand. Please, please, please stand for a word of prayer. Mothers, you may remain seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We have so many things to be thankful for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even when we want to complain, Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy and your grace, Father God. Thank you that, Father God, you first loved us before we even loved you, Father God. Thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary, that we may have life and have it abundantly. Oh, Father God, thank you. Thank you for the blood which was shed for us, Father God. Oh, Father God, before we come ask for anything, Father God, we ask forgiveness, Father God, of anything that we have said, thought, or done that is against your word, Father God. For your word is the truth, Father God. And Father God, no man can come to you, Father God, unless they have Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Father God. For we serve a living God, the true God, the original God. Hallelujah. There's nobody like you, God. Hallelujah, Father God. Even when daddy can't do it, even when mama can't do it, Father God, yet you are God, Father God. You sit high, Father God, but yet you look low, Father God. Thank you for looking down on the little people like us, Father God. For we are your people. We are your creation, Father God. For you are the potter and we are the clay, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, Father God. Father God, we ask that you come into this service, Father God. That you sweep through this room, Father God. Sweep down each and every pew, Father God. Sweep, Father God, from the front of the church, Father God, to the bottom of the church, Father God. Let your anointing flow, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God. For we can do nothing without you, Father God. But we can do all things through Christ, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, Father God. Thank you for quickening us, Father God. Thank you for breathing life on us, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you for your direction, for your words and the steps of a good man are ordered by you, Father God. Order our steps on this day, Father God. Order our steps the rest of the week, Father God. Order our steps the rest of 2023, Father God. Thank you for allowing us to step into this new year, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God. Just those that are troubling with peace, Father God. Touch those that are troubling with finances, Father God. Just those that are, that are, that have things going on in their bodies, Father God. In the name of Jesus. For yet you are a healer, Father God. You are a deliverer, Father God. You are God and you are God all by yourself. Now, Holy Ghost, we ask that you invoke your presence in this place. Come in and have your way. Let it be that church as usual, Father God. Let it not go by a program, Father God, but let us move by your spirit, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God. Touch Bishop from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father God. Bless our pastor, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Have your way, Father God. Have your way, Father God. Continue to strengthen those, Father God, that have been dealing with bereavement, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Yes, Father God. Father God, it's not all peaches and cream for a lot of people, Father God, that are dealing with the holiday season. But, Father God, you're able, Father God. You can do anything but fail, Father God. You are God and God alone, Father God. Now, Father God, as the musicians come forth, Father God, Father God, touch their voices and their minds and their hearts this morning, Father God. Let their the sound of their voice, Father God, be a sweet aroma to you, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we need you today, hey, Father God. We need you to move like never before, Father God. Help us to be more Christ-like. Help us to be that light, Father God. Help us to be that salt, Father God. Help us to walk in your ways, Father God. Help us not to lean towards our own understanding, Father God. But in all our ways, acknowledge you, Father God. For you are God, and without faith it's impossible to please you, Father God. We want to live a pleasing life, Father God. On our best day, Father God, our rat, we're as uh, filthy rags, Father God, our righteousness. But through you, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have life. There's power in the blood. There's power in Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Father God. We give you glory. We give you honor, Father God. Move, Father God. Oh, I feel anointing coming already, Father God. Move in this place. Do what needs to be done. Bring up every fellow ground, Father God. Have your way, Lord. Move. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We usher in your presence, Father God. Have your way. We can be glory, Father God. We don't want to just have church. We want to be the church, Father God. Move, Father God. 
We love you, Father God. We give you praise on your glory. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
is a hallelujah. Sometimes all we got is a thank you, Jesus. I might not can see it now, but I see it. And I see it in my future. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Jehovah is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name.
Güne ilmi
Jesus Christ, thank God for his love. 
uh, that you would please stand to your feet and we want to follow the directions of the ushers there in the rear and we ask that as you give that you would as you return to your seat give God praise for that that he gave you something to give that he gave you uh, he's blessed you with something um, and as you return to your seat whatever it is that you need of the Lord I promise you that he will supply following the directions of the ushers there in the rear as a musician's play skillfully
I want us to also understand it's very important that we do not lose our voice at this time. Um, I've seen city council, I've seen what they have done and what they have allowed to do for us as us as a black people. And it is about time that we as a people begin to stand up and take our rightful places. I'm not judging anybody on council, but the truth of the matter is, I'm really the only qualified candidate to sit on that council. I'm not being arrogant, but I'm just gonna tell you the truth. If you look at that council, and the mayor is my good friend, and he'll tell you, I'm the only one, including him, that has the degree, the stamina, the wherewithal to make that seat. Does my degree make a difference? No, it doesn't. But this is what they tried to say about me the other day. Can I tell you, don't believe everything you read online. Don't believe everything you read on Facebook because they're already trying to scandalize my name. They're intimidated because of the things that I've been able to accomplish. They're intimidated because I am the voice that will cry loud over on the northeast side of town. If you just do some research, you'll find out that they have deemed the Black Hawk County the lowest and the high risk crime area in Waterloo. If you look online, you'll see statistics, and statistics says that the northeast side of Waterloo is um, at a rate so that they receive funds from the government. Now, all dollars that you get are not good dollars. Hello, somebody. All funding that you get from the state is not the right funding that you want to be isolated with or associated with. And unfortunately, the fundings that the northeast side of Waterloo is receiving are dollars to say we're helping to prevent crime. And we need a better change. I'm asking for your vote on March 7th, 2023. If you are a resident in the fourth ward, if you have not yet signed a petition, I ask that you would be so gracious and sign mine. Again, KD has the clipboard. If you can please sign that uh, clipboard and get me on the ballot. And then on March 7th, if you can cast your vote for me, I would greatly appreciate it. I tell you now, I'm not gonna make you any promises, but I will tell you this. If you come to City Hall on the first and third Mondays of every month, we'll all raise hell together. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you, Bishop, so very much.
So he came, he spoke, but he left an offering as well. Y'all clap your hands for him. Come on, thank you.
we do say amen and amen. If you're going to commune with us, we're asking that you would stand to your feet. And we're going to ask that you follow the uh, the instructions of the ushers that are in the rear. So that means we're going to come out this way. We're going to come up and get our communion, our sacraments, and then you're going to go back to your seats. And you're going to hold them until we commune together. Amen.
rescued us. What we just did, that's what rescued us. That right there, nothing else was going to do. Money couldn't even pay the debt. But that's what rescued us right there. Hallelujah. Again, we greet you with the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for the very presence of the Lord that is in this place. And I want you to know he's in the building. And the very presence that we feel in the building, he's I'm not present everywhere, present at the same time. Those of you that are watching, you can be experiencing the same presence of God right where you are. And so we thank God for his presence. Because it makes a difference, doesn't it? Because the Bible says, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so when His presence is there, it makes a difference. And so we thank God that He has made a difference in our coming. And our coming was not in vain today, but we have experienced the very presence of God. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. First Samuel, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 15. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version when you get it. I know you've been standing and sitting a lot, but so that we can honor the reading of the word of the Lord, we ask that you would stand to your feet one more time uh, as you get it. And mothers, y'all can stay seated uh, as we read this. I know it is lengthy, but it won't be that long. Do you have it? Although everybody, if you're able to stand, stand to your feet. If there's an ailment why you cannot, we do understand. But everybody else, we ask that you stand to your feet. Grab your children and have them stand. Serenity ever. Again, 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. Verses 1 through 15. A very familiar passage of scripture very familiar story to all of us. It says, now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn your mourn for Saul, saying I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king amongst his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Verse 3, then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I named to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, do you come peaceably? Verse 5, and he said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Verse 6, so it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outer appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Aren't you glad that he looks at our hearts versus our outer appearance? So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. Right. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest, and there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, sit and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. Verse 12, so he went and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is the one. 
Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling him. Father, we now thank you for the reading of your word. God, thank you that you left it on record for us that we are able, God, to read and to look into it even now. And thank you, God, that we're able to apply it to our lives. And so, Father, we pray now that you would amplify your voice in this place. God, that your word will go forth. And God, that it would fall on good ground. And God, as we always ask, that it would produce fruit in the days, the weeks, and the months to come. God, that your people will be strengthened, that they will be encouraged, that they will be lifted in the name of Jesus as we enter into this new year 2023 we thank you God that it's going to take your anointing it's going to take your empowerment for us to accomplish and to do all that you have assigned our hands to do so father we bind the hand of the enemy every distraction everything that will try to come and captivate our minds everything that will try to come and steal our attention off of you we want you to be high and lifted up and we want your glory to fill this place in the name of Jesus we thank you that we'll be the better because of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may have your seats. Who is Samuel? As we look at into this first chapter, this first book of Samuel, chapter 16. Samuel. I don't know if you remember the story about Samuel. Samuel was a young child when I called him about, uh, how old is JJ? Uh, nine. He's nine, probably around that age. Uh, and Samuel worked in the temple with Eli, and he lived with Eli, uh, the priest. Uh, and God called him, as over in the first uh, chapter of uh, Samuel, around chapter three. Uh, and Samuel is there, and it's in the middle of the night that Samuel is sleeping. And God begins to call uh, in an audible way, uh, Samuel. Isn't it funny how God can call you? Nobody else can hear it, but you can hear it. Because God is a spirit, and God will deal with you in the spirit realm. Uh, he was calling unto uh, Samuel, and Samuel fought. Uh, it was Eli calling him, and so every time he heard the call, he would get from, from his bed and run in and ask, did you call? And uh, Eli would tell him, no, uh, I did not call you. You can go back and lay down. And after that had happened a few times, uh, Eli instructed him, uh, the last time he said, go back, and when you hear it again, just say, your servant heareth. Yes. And so God was calling this young boy, Samuel, at an early age, isn't it funny uh, that at early ages uh, God has all, God already orchestrates things to bring us into uh, what he has designed for us to be. That's why some of our lives were the way that they were. It was divinely orchestrated by God so that um, we could get to our expected end so that we could be everything that God has called us to be. He let us be born into the right family. He let us go to the right schools even though you think that it wasn't the right thing. I want you to understand that um, we're dealing with a thought that is very, very, um, he, he pays very close attention to detail and he divinely orchestrates things in our lives so that we can get to our expected end. Uh, you can look back over your life and you can think that you had a lot of failures and you had a hard life and it may be true that you had a hard life but I want you to understand when you belong to God God can cause all of those things to work together for your good. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? I dare you just to praise him that he's going to work all things together for your good. Everything that happened to you in your life, he'll work it together for your good. So this young man, Samuel, God has called him. Not only has he called him to be a priest, but he called him to be a prophet. 
uh, if you look over the life of Samuel, uh, represented in the Old Testament, in every role of leadership open to a Jewish man of the day, he was. He was a seer, he was a priest, he was a judge, he was a prophet, he was a military leader. He had a, God had all of this on the inside of Samuel. And sometimes you will never know what God has on the inside of you. Uh, I was listening to a man last night, uh, and he was talking. If we stay in our comfort zone, if we have a problem with being uncomfortable, then that means we will always, we will never tap into everything that God has for us. And so sometimes God has to take us through a season of uncomfortability. He's got to bring us outside of the box. He's got to make us so uncomfortable that we just want to run and hide. But I want you to know that sometimes God has to take us through a season of uncomfortability. Anybody in here in an uncomfortable season? Don't be discouraged. Don't get upset. Don't throw in the towel. Don't walk away. Just say, God, I thank you for what you're doing in my life right now. You got me uncomfortable to bring me into something else. Because if I stay comfortable, I'm not going to pursue. I'm not going to do anything I'll stay with the norm. I'll become stagnant. I'll become stuck if I'm comfortable. Oh, that's why people don't like to go to certain churches. Ah, that's why we don't like to be in certain services because it makes us uncomfortable. Because no preach to me about what I need to change. Tell me what I'm going to get. Tell me what God is going to do for me. Don't tell me what I got to do for him. Tell him what he's going to give me. Don't prophesy something to me that don't sound good, but prophesy something to me that makes me feel good about where I am. No, no, no. no. Uh, uh. So we get uncomfortable. And God will make us uncomfortable on purpose. Literally on purpose. God makes us uncomfortable. And so Samuel is a man of God that God had called at a young age. And God was grooming him and fashioning him for the work that he had laid out for him. And so it is here that Samuel really becomes, um, comes into play um, as under the rule of Saul and we understand that Saul is a king Saul is the king over Israel he is the king over Israel I believe he was the first king over Israel the first king over Israel is who Saul was and you know when you're the first king over something you know you set a precedent you know you it's the first it's, it's history making And um, Saul, God anoints Saul to be king. If you look over in 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter, verse 27, through verse, I mean, through chapter 10, verse 1. I'm going to read it for you so that you can hear it. This is Samuel and Saul together. Uh, it says, as they were going down to the outskirts of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Tell the servant to go on ahead of us. And he went on. But you stand here a while that I may announce to you the word of the Lord. Verse 10. I mean, chapter 10, verse 1. It said, then Samuel took a flask of oil. The same thing that we just read about David. Because this is how they anointed kings and people back in the day. Uh, then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? And his inheritance was Israel, his children. That was his inheritance. And so Samuel, this seer, this prophet, this judge, is anointing Saul. To be king. And it was in the course of this, after this happened, that the relationship of Saul and Samuel became strained. I'm fast forwarding through this. 
The strained relationship between Saul and Samuel occurred after Samuel had installed Saul as the first king of the Israelites. Samuel anointed Saul as king in, the, in Israel following persistent requests from the Israelites. The Israelites, they wanted him as king. This happened some time after they settled in the promised land. And so, he is anointed to be king. And you know after people get anointed or after people get to their position, sometimes they get a little funny at them. When they start making that dollar amount, then they start getting real kind of bougie. Now, before they was ghetto bougie. Now they just bougie. Soon as they get a title, they want to flip up, they want to switch off. Soon as they get the degree, then they want to act like you stupid. Soon as they get a mate, then how you acting is ridiculous. But we was acting this way together before you got me. But now you got one. People change on us, don't they? I don't know if you've ever been, if you've, if, if you've ever been exposed to that, if it's ever happened to you when people reach a certain place, they want to get funny with you. Well, they got a name for themselves and all of that. King Saul got beside himself. <laughs> now he's king. The people wanted me. I'm the first king over Israel. God chose me. God chose me. And then, you know, when, when, when they get there, then they think they got liberties. Have mercy. I can see this is going to take longer than I anticipated. <laughs> You know, they get liberties, you know, when people get ruled over folk, then they think, you know, they can control everything. He becomes so full of himself uh, that he makes some mistakes. He gets frustrated. Him and Samuel's relationship becomes strained because Samuel wasn't doing what he, what Saul thought he should do. Samuel was moving at his own pace because I believe Samuel probably had his own issues going on too. Just because you call and you're anointed doesn't mean that uh, you forsake all of your fleshly uh, carnal ways. Okay, let me talk to some real folk. Let me tell you something about being anointed. We can be anointed and empowered to do certain ministries and what we need to do. But we are still flesh and we are still carnal and we still have frailties and weaknesses. And so that means I don't care how much you speak in tongues, you can mess up too. Oh, no, I'm not some deep folk in here. Let me talk to you again. You can slip up and say the wrong thing too. Your flesh will get just as hot as an unbeliever's if you're not careful. He got caught up in his flesh. King Saul did. And so God had given Saul some instructions. When you've been called by God, when God has anointed you, and he needed to understand, it wasn't the people that anointed him. They wanted him, but God called him and anointed him. And he sent a real prophet to him to tell him, have you not been in charge with God's inheritance? Sent a real prophet to him. You know I'm on that thing about them prophets. Let me tell you something. Don't you find somebody and label them a prophet if they're always telling you what's wonderful and what's always, uh, that the sun is always going to shine and the grass is always going to be green. Sometimes they need to come to you. You need to get yourself together. Because what 
they are to do, they are to announce, they are to prepare the people for what God is getting ready to do. And so, God called Saul. And so that means that he was under Saul. He was under God's control. And so he had to do what God assigned him to do. When you've really been called by God, you have to do, you have to complete the assignment that God has called you to complete. You don't get to choose your assignments. If I told you to go to Nineveh, Jonah, go. Joseph, if I told you you got to go to the pit, go. You're going from the pit into slavery. You're going from slavery into jail. Mary, you're highly favored of God. If you are called of God, you've got to complete the assignment. Come on now, Bishop. Yeah. Everybody's trying to wiggle out the assignments that God has given them. Everybody's trying to wiggle out the anointings that God has given them. God has anointed us all to do something. But guess what? Because somebody else's stuff looks better. I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to carry that anointing. God said, that ain't what I anointed you to do. So get on back over there and dig a ditch. If I didn't tell you to build a house and I told you to dig a ditch, you anointed to dig the ditch. Dig the ditch, bro. Because everybody else looks, it looks their, theirs looks more glamorous than mine. Oh, their anointing looks more glamorous than mine. Let me tell you how the anointing comes. It comes by way of crushing. So I don't care what it looks like right now. You don't know the crushing that I went through to get this anointing. Oh, my Lord. Oh, so, so he gives Saul an assignment. Saul's first assignment was a campaign against the Philistines. The enemy. That's right. This was the first assignment. First assignment. Against the Philistines. And he got upset with Samuel. Because he had called for Samuel to come to offer a sacrifice so they could get favor from God. And it was only the priests that could offer the sacrifice. And so because Samuel didn't show up, when Saul thought he should show up, he took it on himself, Saul took it on himself to offer a sacrifice. He took some prerogatives that he could not and he should not have taken. Only the priest could offer it. They're under the law. The law was strict. They, there was no way around it. There was no loophole. There was no grace. There was no mercy. It was, a, it was the law. And if you broke the law, then you had to suffer. Thank God for grace and mercy. Baby, I wouldn't have made it. I'd have broke the law so much. <laughs> I'd have transgressed against God so much. So he took the prerogatives and offered this sacrifice. Samuel warned that Saul's kingdom would not endure, meaning that his family would not establish a dynasty that he would be succeeded by someone else from a different family. Oh, God would have to work this thing out. Oh, yes, he did. Because he took some prerogatives that he should have. Because he was anointed to be king. You have to be careful when God has anointed you that you don't take prerogatives or think that you can do things that step outside of the wheel and the parameters of which God has said. I'm almost done for today. Then he gives him a second assignment. God gives him a second chance or another chance. 
Because these are the these are the these are the situations that are recorded. Yeah. Right. You know, there are some things that are noted about us that people know. There's some things that happen in our lives that people know about, but they don't know the, they don't know all the other stuff, all the other stuff that was kept off the record. Or oh, anybody here got some stuff that was kept off the record. There's a few things y'all might know about me, but there's some stuff you have no idea. God hid that stuff. God covered that stuff. You didn't know nothing about it. He dealt with it in the basement. He dealt with it in the dark. He dealt with it in the dark. That's some stuff you don't want nobody to know nothing about. Don't nobody know nothing about it but you, God, and the devil, and the other person involved. Shut the devil's mouth on it. That's why I didn't get out. Look at somebody and say, he shut the devil's mouth about me. <sighs> he shut his mouth about me because there was some stuff he could have said. There was some stuff he could have told. But the Lord said, I'm going to shut your mouth. Just like he did that line with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came and spent the night. He said, you going to sit there and shut up. Don't you say nothing. I got you on a leash. Every time you bark on me, I'm going to yank your chain. Get your mouth off my chain. Need to know that. So I bet you there's some things about Samuel, I mean Saul, that wasn't even on record. But these are the things that are noted that God wanted us to know. Especially to the anointed, to those that are called. And so God commanded. So all he gives him another instruction. Now, he didn't handle the issue with the Philistines, right? That was an enemy. Then God tells him, listen, I want you to go and I want you to wipe out the Amalekites. Wipe them out. Not one left. Kill them all. Everything. Livestock. Everything. Don't say nothing. Kill them. Annihilate them. Obliterate them. Get rid of them. This is the instruction that I got. I called you. I anointed you. Now just do what I ask you to do. Go there and wipe them out. I I've anointed you. I called you even from your mother's womb. All I'm asking you to do is stand up and write the divine. Even if they don't say it, they'll preach it anyway. But because he was anointed and full of himself, he was still going to take some prerogatives. Let's look here. But Saul and his army decided. See, you got to make sure you're running with people that's going to hold you accountable. You hear me? We like to hang out with people that, that tell us we okay the way we are. That's why cause we'll fall out with people. No, I ain't hanging out with no one. Uh -uh. I don't need to talk to you. No, Especially when people start backsliding, they'll change up your relationship. Especially if you're the type that hold somebody accountable. Now, did, did God say that? What did God tell you to do? Him and his army. He's the leader. Him and his army decided to save the best of the sheep, cattle, fat calves, lambs, everything that was good. They decided to keep it for themselves. Now the Lord told him, kill it all. He was God's king, so he could have anything that he wanted. He could have anything that he wanted. Anything. Just like David. David could have had any woman he wanted, but he had to have a sheep. you already got. But you had to have Uriah the Hittite's wife. He, they save all the good stuff. Not only did they save that, 
they only destroyed that which, that which they thought was undesirable and worthless. Stuff that wouldn't benefit him. But the other could benefit him. But God said, kill them all. Kill all of them. They even spared King Agag. Because at the time of capture, kings were uh, prized if they brought another, if they got another king and had him captive. So it would make them look good. And so they done spared all this stuff when God said kill them all. This was Saul. Saul was anointed. To be a king. First king over Israel. But he's defied. And disobeyed God. So now. It's just like. To me. What Adam did. Adam failed. And God had to send someone else. To redeem man. The king, this king, Saul, he has failed. Now, I've got to find me a new king. Because he's failed in what I called him and anointed him to do. And so now, this is when we open up to this text. And Samuel writes, now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, saying I have rejected him for reigning over Israel? Saul, when I'm closing, is grieved over his relationship with Saul. He's grieved about it. He was, this is the king that he served under. This is the king that he has reigned with. This is the king that has come to him and consulted him and asked him, what is the Lord saying? This is that king. And so he is grieved over Saul. Because now, because he's still a real prophet, he realizes now God is getting ready to reject him. Well, he is rejected by God. That means he's getting ready to move off of the scene. And the Lord asked him, how long are you going to grieve over him? See that I have rejected him. I've rejected him. And he tells him, he says, listen. He's no longer the man that I've chosen. But I'm going to send you now again. When you were coming down the mountain coming down from the hills with him. I had you take a flask of oil. Now I need you to get the horn of oil. Fill it because I'm going to send you to anoint my new king. I want you to understand that this is the year that you have to have the anointing. Is going to take the anointing. And you ask me what is the anointing? It is a special endowment to get a job done. That's a simple definition. It's, a, it's an endowment of power from God to get something done. You may not even be have the education to do it, but if you have the anointing to do it, you can get the job done. You may not even have the voice or the range to get it out. But if God anoints you to do it, you'll get it done. You may not even have the background for it. But when God anoints you, you can get it done. This is the year of the anointing. We've got to have the anointing because... This is a year that some are getting ready to be rejected and God is getting ready to anoint another. And you wonder 
why you've been held in the wings. You wonder why you've been held in spiritual mothballs. You wonder why God had you hid away. God had you tucked away. It's because this is the season now. He said, I've got one that's anointed that will get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God Almighty. Hmm. As I close, when he tells them to bid that, fill that horn, because I'm going to send you to the one that I have provided for myself. Samuel responded, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. If Saul hears it, he's going to kill me. People have a hard time giving up places and positions. Uh, they have a hard time giving it up when they, re when, when they finally realize God is doing something different. And so they can become very territorial. And they can, can become very uh, aggressive. You have to fear nothing. God told him, go. But he was concerned about Saul because he knew Saul's uh, things that he had done, his stuff. He knew. But God gave him a, gave him an out. <laughs> he said, listen, tell me what you do. Get you a heifer. Take the heifer down yonder to Bethlehem. Yes. <laughs> Go on down there and say you're coming to make the sacrifice. Yeah. You're down there to basically consecrate. Yeah. Go down there and do that. Yeah. Go there. And when you get there, invite Jesse and his boys. <laughs> invite Jesse and his boys. Because I'm, I'm going to consecrate them first anyway. Yeah, yeah. Before my anointing comes, I need to consecrate them first. Before I make this appointment, I'm going to consecrate them first. Get them and invite them. And as he was heading to the city, because they knew he was a real prophet. They knew he was a warrior. They knew he was a seer. The elders in the city said, listen, uh, Samuel, are you coming in peace? He said, listen, I'm coming in peace. I ain't even coming to deal with y'all. I ain't coming to tell them nothing in y'all city. I bet you if he could tell them why he was really there, it would be like, I came here because the king is here in your city. The one God has chosen, the anointed, is in your city. So I say to you today, this is the year of the anointing. God has chosen you to get something done. Let me say this, and don't be offended by what I'm getting ready to say in the way that I say it. Please don't be ignorant of the fact that you that you think God won't let you corner the market on something that you refuse to no longer do. The Lord's program will not be held up because you refuse. I'm here to tell y'all, because you refuse, because you refuse God, because you keep Remember when I told you he's coming to challenge your excuses? He's coming. Remember I told you last week? He's coming to challenge your excuses. He's coming to challenge your ministries. He's coming to challenge your comfort zone. That's what I'm trying to tell you. He's coming to challenge you because he's saying, listen, I've got something that I've got to do. I'm getting ready to, I'm redeeming the time. I'm trying to prepare them for my coming. And so that means if i got to ship you out of the way, I will. But i got somebody else that I have anointed. They have been in time of prayer. They've been at their own house praying and fasting. They've been sitting on the sidelines. They've been sitting in church and they've been worshiping and they've been giving me the praise. I've been anointing them. They have gone through hard times. They have been through trials. But I've been anointing them. I've been crushing them to get the anointing out of them. Is it you? Look at somebody say, is it you? Uh, is it you? Uh, is it you that the Lord is looking for? Oh, yeah. And 
don't y'all underestimate it. These little nine-year-olds, these little three-year-olds that are sitting in this building, God will put an anointing on them. You hear me? If you look out on Facebook, you'll see children are out there and they're laying on the altar and they're worshiping what old people won't even do. Because we're taking the prerogative. I don't have to do all of that. Oh, Lord, let me get on off of this. This is that time. This is the season. This is the season of the anointing. It's the season of the anointing. I know people have tried to label this a long time ago, but this is the season of the anointing. You've got to have the anointing to get your this, get this job done. Oh, you're going to have the anointing to do the business. Oh, you get your anointing on, you're going to be so bad. You're going to make millions because you're anointed at that time for that business. Come on, somebody. You're going to be able to watch demons tremble, watch people heal, watch people deliver. Why? Because God has put an anointing on you. There's an anointing on you to do ministry. There's an anointing on you to do business. There's an anointing on you to walk in power. In, in government offices, there's going to be an anointing on you. Listen, as we stand to our feet, everybody, I'm at one o'clock. Before I give you these announcements, if you receive the word, I beg you just to lift your hands in the air and say, I receive the word of the Lord. Receive the word of the Lord. Don't you let your past. Don't you let your past. Disqual your past does not disqualify you. Your past qualifies you. You hear me? Your past qualifies you. Your mistakes qualify you. Because he didn't call that one perfect person. Everybody here knowing it was flawed. There's only one man from Genesis to Revelation that was flawless. It was Jesus himself. Everything else between Genesis and Revelations was flawed. It was raggedy from the floor from, from, from the floor. But there might be somebody here today that doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Yo, there might be somebody here that's saying, listen, I'm ready for God to anoint me to fulfill my purpose and the plan that he has for my life. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want to extend this invitation to you to come and give your life to Jesus Christ. Listen, I, I beg you, I beg you, as the scripture says, I beseech you by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I beg you today, don't walk out of here and not give your life to Jesus Christ. This is the change that he wants to make in, make in your life. So if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, I extend to you this invitation. Even if you're watching my way on social media, we have a way to reach you too. Secondly, if you're here today and you're backslid, you've been out of fellowship with God, which caused you to fall out of fellowship with church. We extend to you this invitation right now to return to him so that you can be restored. God wants to restore you. Just because you backslid, it did not cancel. God's plan and God's purpose over your life. It did not. It did not. God already knew you were going to backslide. God already knew. Nothing takes God by surprise. So he knew. Because he's all knowing. He knows your thoughts from afar off. He knows the very intents of your heart. So he knew you were going to get caught up. He knew you were going to fall away. If it's you, don't leave here like that. And thirdly today, if you're looking for a church home, I want to extend to you this invitation to become a member of this fellowship. So we open the doors of this church to you. So if any part of this call fits you, 
We extend it to you now, even if you're watching by way of social media. If you give us a call at this number, 319-232-3428, we'll send somebody to the phone to speak to you, to talk to you, to minister to you. So just because you're watching by way of social media, or you can send us an email and we'll get back to you at giftoflife1 at msn.com. And we'll reach back out to you. We extend to you these invitations today. And my prayer is that you would respond to them. I pray you respond to the word of the Lord. I pray that you respond to the spirit of God. Because he has great things in store for you. Come on, would you put your hands together and just give them the praise in this place for this day. You can have your seats just for a moment. Let me give you these announcements and then I will send you home. First of all, we want to make sure that we remember all of our sick and our shut in. There are many and there are numerous ones around us. Uh, Brother Charles Allen, Tarsi Bailey, uh, Deborah Bentley, the city of Waterloo, Georgia, Colin Pat Davis, Clark Dixon, Joel Elliott, GLC Mother's Board. Uh, that includes Mama Lily Hart. And, uh, the, we want to continue to pray for the Hart family. Pastor Barbara Hill, uh, Regina Johnson, and daughter Dean Atlanta, Pastor Key, Susan Kincaid, George, uh, Deacon George Meeks and family, Willis, Jorinda O'Neill, Mother Brady, and New Odea, uh, Charles and Evelyn Riley, Sam Smith, Monroe Stevens, Brian Turner, Joyce Wilder, uh, Sanders, June Wright, uh, Debbie Powers, uh, and also Barbara Jordan, I believe, was the name. So we want to remember all of those, and then our bereaved families, uh, Gregory Burkett, Dr. Gloria Kirkland Holmes, uh, Bertha Housie, Alicia Jones, Jesse James Jones, Helen Meeks, Gwendolyn Thompson, and Elise Duvall uh, Chateau. Uh, all those are our bereaved families in our community, and if there are others uh, that I did not call, please, uh, charge it to my head and not my heart, and we just did not have that information. Uh, but we do remember you all. We will remember you in prayer. And so we just ask that uh, you would just remember those in your time of prayer, uh, that you would pray for them uh, because they need the comfort of the Lord uh, during this time. Uh, the services for Dr. Gloria Kirkland Holmes uh, will be, uh, the visitation is on Friday, January 13th from 4 to 6. And the services are Saturday, the 14th of January at 11 a.m. And that's going to be held at Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church. Um, she has just been a pillar in our community. Uh, and she has done a lot in the area of education. Uh, and so we want to remember uh, the Holmes family, especially her children, uh, that are left behind, you know, burying their mother and their father within a two-year period. So we just pray for uh, Pastor Corey Holmes and all of his siblings uh, as they uh, celebrate the life of their mother. Uh, you know, sure that it's very hard. And then we want to remember our mayor and Mother Lily Hart uh, as uh, they celebrated the life of uh, uh, Brother Gosey Hart on this land on this past Thursday. And I want to say thank you to give the life for everything that you did. Everything that you did from the kitchen stand, um, Brother Pat, he, uh, he's the new usher and he was there uh, because the other ushers could not make it, uh, but he was there and he held it down. So we appreciate him. Uh, so y'all clap your hands for him. Yeah, we appreciate him so very much. To the music department, um, everybody, we appreciate all of y'all for all that you guys did. Uh, and I, and I, I know I speak for Mama Lily. Uh, and Mayor Hart, um, thank you guys so much uh, for always representing and always um, being good at what you do. Thank you so much. Um, we want to say happy birthday to all of our people that are celebrating birthdays in this January. So happy birthday to all of our uh, January people. And then I don't know if they want me to talk about this or they want to talk about Mary. You want to be this Mary. You want to talk about this or you want me to do it? You coming? All right, come on. And while she's coming, uh, my brother back there, uh, I call him my other son too, uh, <clears throat> uh, Brother Cliff Jeans, um, they're hiring an uh, automotive detailer at Armin's Auto Sales. Uh, starting pay is $15 to $20 an hour. 
Family friendly work schedule Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturdays of 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can call Brother Cliff or talk to Brother Cliff. He has his hand up back there. So if you're looking for a job, you'll see Brother Cliff uh, back there. He's sitting there. And I'm going to let, and then I thank God for uh, the Jones family because they ran into a situation yesterday and I didn't know until Pastor Chator came to church. Uh, but God rescued them because they house caught on fire. Caught on in the kitchen, was it? Little part of the kitchen. But think about all the tragedies that we've heard, you know, over the last six months of people dying and kids dying in a fire. But God got them out. So come on, y'all give God praise. And thank God I'm with them. I don't care how small the fire is. Fire is fire. Amen. Thank God for them. Yes, Pastor Judy is going to come just as soon as our, uh, Evangelist Mary is done. She wants to talk about uh, what's going on downstairs and so she can effectively speak on it. And I'm going to allow her to do that. Good morning. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. I am here um, to just elaborate a little bit on um, the community meal that we give away every third Sunday of the month. Um, we thank and praise God that so far it has been a great success um, by the grace of the Lord. Um, our goal every Sunday is to, or every third Sunday, is to give out um, 100 meals. And the Lord has allowed us to far exceed giving out that 100 meals um, every third Sunday. So next Sunday, um, we're going to have spaghetti bake with green beans, garlic bread, um, and brownies for the dessert. This is free. It costs you absolutely nothing to come out, to get the word, to come down, to fellowship. Um, you know, you are getting your spirit fed and your stomach fed. And so we, we in, invite you, please get your family, come out, fellowship with us here at Gift of Life. Um, you don't even have to be a member here. Um, just come for the fellowship, get the food. If you don't need it, bless somebody else with the meal um, so that they don't have to cook for that Sunday. And then the following Sunday, um, which would be, I believe, I want to say the 20th, um, they, we are selling chicken dinners. Um, it is Sunday, January 22nd. Chicken dinners are $13. Um, you will get your chicken, your french fries, um, drinks will be sold separately. If you want to pre-order, um, you will have to do so uh, through the office. It will need to be paid at that time, and then you will be able to pick that up. On both of these Sundays, we will start at noon um, with the free giveaway meal and with the selling of the chicken dinners. Amen, saints? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, everybody knows I love the holidays. This is our last hoorah um, since the holidays are over and we are heading into a new year. Um, and we just wanted to let everybody know that we had our last set of free cookies and hot chocolate, which is back in the celebration room for everybody that wants to have some. There's also still ornaments on the tree that people can take home, pack them up for next year, and it's gonna be even bigger and better next year um, for our ornament giveaway. We want to also remember um, that our Black History Month is fastly approaching up on us, and I am going to ask by next Sunday that anybody that would like to participate or help me in getting things together for the Black History Month um, church celebration, um, we want to definitely uh, meet with you so that we can uh, have a great Sunday service um, prepared for you. So we're asking that you please, please, please see me uh, about that. We are truly grateful for all that he has done and the newness that is coming. All I can hear, Ty Trivet wrote a song and at first it didn't get to me, but this song that got to me this week, that y'all know the song, if you don't listen to the current radio current current not but current ty trippin sings the song new 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 everything new oh that thing been getting to me i'm ready to go and so 
this thing uh, for us this year, we are getting ready to go. Bishop and I have been talking about the men's auxiliary, the women, the youth, and what all we want to see happen, the Bible studies that are going to start taking place. Um, so we are super excited about the new, 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 the new year that is here and we still understand that the pandemic is going on but I have not seen nobody staying home from nothing so we are going to rejoin regroup get ourselves together so that we can go into this new year ready to do what God has called us to do so listen is there any ready people in here for the new year and the new things that are coming for 2023 for the gift of life church put your hands together because I'm ready we got new faces, new members, new people. That means God is doing new, new, new. And so we want to go in and seize the moment, take the territory, and do what God has called us to do with new vigor and new fire, being newly renewed in God. And so we are getting ready to go in and take over. Amen? That's Sunday school, too, I think. Uh, Sister Ruth Jean has been sending messages, and so we just want to really, really take our time back that, pan that the pandemic has stole from God's people. So we are, Bishop, you want me to Okay, praise God. So we're getting ready to uh, go ahead and dismiss, stand to your feet. We thank God for what a mighty word God is putting out through Bishop Brian Hill. We thank God for giving him fresh manna, amen? Fresh food for the children to eat on, that we can eat on it through the week and, and get strength from it. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, uh, and, and think about some of the stuff that he's been saying. Oh, and don't let me forget, how many have been journaling this week? I have been putting it down. I'm writing the vision and I'm making it plain. I want God to move mightily. We have completed our first week in the journaling and we have until the end of January. If you're still needing a journal, please let me know that and we will give the journals and the bookmarks to you before the time is running out. Uh, we have come to that first week. And uh, I know there were some challenging things even in that first week that I have put in my journal. But I trust God with all things. So I am just, I beseech you, my brothers and my sisters, do not forget to journal. Write down those points. Begin to pray about what it is that you need God to do. And when you have gotten that release for that day, start printing it down. Because I believe God is going to do just what he said he would do. If we bow our heads, Father God, we thank you for this service. We thank you for everyone that is assembled here. We thank you, oh God, that those that need it uh, from you receive from you. For those that needed relifting, oh God, they were lifted. Those that needed a revival, hallelujah, that their souls were revived. Now, God, we ask in this week, oh God, that you would be with us, oh God. Cover your children. Keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Thank you for the praise report that you're still good and you're still God and you can put out the fire even though it comes against us you can put it out and all things will be well thank you God that you will keep carbs in this oh God keep uh, premature deaths oh God from us father we ask God that you would grant us with good health father for your words and I would that no man perish but that they would prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prosper so God we pray 